Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is continuation of my last lecture, which was the principles of systemic therapy. So like we did in the last lecture, today we are going to discuss the following important drugs which are used in dermatology. Methotrexate, mycophenolate, morphetil, colchicine, dapsone, acitritin, fumaric acid esters, hydroxycarbamide, aprimilast, and tofacitinib. So let's start the lecture with the most important drug, which I think is very important as far as the immunosuppressive treatment is concerned, and that is methotrexate. It's an anti-metabolite that has been used as a chemotherapeutic agent since early 1950s. So the drug has more than 70 years of use and we are now very sure of its safety and adverse effect profile. It is immunosuppressive and anti-inflammatory when used therapeutically in variety of rheumatological, gastrointestinal, neurological, and dermatological inflammatory disorders. And methotrexate is also used as an abortifacient drug to induce abortions. The dermatological use. In UK, methotrexate is licensed and is highly effective in the treatment of severe psoriasis. Off-label uses of methotrexate include its use as a steroid-sparing agent in immunobullous disorders like pemphigus, bullous pemphigoid, secretorial pemphigoid, and EBA. In connective tissue, tissue diseases like dermatomyositis, lupus erythematosus, and scleroderma. In several vasculitides, in neutrophilic dermatoses like pyoderma, gangrenosum, and Sweet syndrome and in other inflammatory conditions like atopic dermatitis, in sarcoidosis, in cutaneous Crohn's disease, and chronic idiopathic urticaria. And it is also used in certain proliferative disorders like mycosis fungoides, Caesarea syndrome, petrisis lacunoides, and petrisis rubra pilaris. So wide use in dermatology. Methotrexate is a weak organic acid with very similar structure to folic acid. Administration. Methotrexate is usually taken orally in a weekly dose, although it can be administered as an intramuscular, intravenous, subcutaneous, or intralesional routes. The oral forms are uh, uh, in uh, a tablet of 2.5 mg and 10 mg. Pharmacokinetics. It is absorbed from GI tract rapidly, efficiently, and actively transported by carrier-mediated uptake system. The bioavailability can be improved with parenteral administration. So if there is a problem in GI uptake, then we can go for intramuscular or subcutaneous route. Its penetration in the blood-brain barrier is poor in the circulation, it is approximately 50% protein bound. If displaced from protein by other drugs like aspirin, NSAIDs, and sulfonamides, the serum plasma level increases and also increases the risk of side effects such as pancytopenia. So giving aspirin, NSAIDs, and sulfonamides with methotrexate should be avoided. Contrary to the historical perspective that it is not metabolized, approximately 10% of the drug is converted to 7-hydroxymethotrexate in liver. Both methotrexate and 7-hydroxymethotrexate are excreted mainly through the kidneys and small portion in bile. Half-life of methotrexate is 6 to 8 hours. It is undetectable in serum after 24 hours although the inter, intracellular accumulation is of long duration, which is the reason of its weekly dosing. Then pharmacodynamics. The mechanism of action of methotrexate are complex. 
it inhibits a number of key enzyme system and by virtue of being a structural analog of folic acid, methotrexate blocks the metabolism of folic acid through competitive inhibition of dihydrofolate reductase. Here is the place where methotrexate works. That is the conversion of dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. Then it inhibits the thym thymy dil uh, dilate synthetase, which converts deoxyuridine monophosphate to thym thymidine phos monophosphate, um, which is essential for the normal DNA replication. While the suppression of uh, transmethylation reactions and the reduction of purine pyrimidine synthesis by inhibition of folate dependent enzyme play a role in its anti proliferative and immunosuppressive properties. The re relation to lymphocytes uh, is, a, uh, is the main uh, effect of methotrexate, which supports its anti inflammatory action. And here, the main mediator is the adenosine. Drug toxicity. Myelotoxicity. The most cases of dose-dependent methotrexate induce bone marrow suppression occur within first two months of the treatment, although it can occur at any time. This result in pancytopenia or combination of anemia, leukopenia, or thrombocytopenia with potentially lethal consequences. Folate supplementation provides some protection. Particular risk factors for myelotoxicity include poor kidney functions, old age, displacement of methotrexate from protein binding sites, as uh, told before, by concomitant use of NSAIDs or sulfonamides, then hypoalbuminemia when the protein level is low and protein bounding is low. Then it advertent daily rather than weekly methotrexate dose increase risk of pancytopenia. So this daily dose is mostly given inadvertent, inadvertently, wrongly, by mistake, uh, of the doctor or the pharmacist. Should significant myelosuppression occur during methotrexate therapy, prompt folinic acid rescue should be considered. Then nephrotoxicity. In high doses, methotrexate may cause renal damage, but this is an unlikely consequence of low dose therapy. Then hepatotoxicity, which is more important, and it is the drug is associated with transient elevation of hepatic enzymes or long-term liver fibrosis. The underlying mechanism appears to be associated with adenosine A2AG protein coupled receptors. Comorbidities that increase hepatotoxicity include obesity, high alcohol intake, previous hepatic problem, and diabetes. Methotrexate-induced cirrhosis often has a fairly non-aggressive clinical course, and advanced hepatic fibrosis is uncommon. The gastrointestinal toxicity. Methotrexate commonly causes anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and stomatitis. Folate supplementation and or administration of methotrexate parenterally can reduce these GI side effects. Then the pulmonary toxicity. Methotrexate-induced pulmonary toxicity is uncommon in psoriatic patients, but pneumonitis or pulmonary fibrosis can occur with low doses of methotrexate and is a serious unpredictable and potentially fatal adverse reaction. So the development of cuff and dyspnea in a methotrexate user should prompt immediate cessation of methotrexate 
and appropriate investigation and treatment. Reproductive toxicity. Methotrexate is teratogenic and uh, aborted efficient. It induces abortion and therefore should be avoided in pregnancy. It is excreted in breast milk, so it should be avoided in breastfed women. Methotrexate can impair fertility by adversely affecting the oogenesis and spermatogenesis and causing menstrual dysfunction. These effects are considered reversible on discontinuation of the therapy. The drug also has a mutagenic potentials and thus it would seem prudent to advise women to avoid contraception while taking methotrexate for up to three months after stopping the drug. If a patient on methotrexate become pregnant, the patient should be advised therapeutic abortion. There are no reports suggesting that male who use methotrexate at the time of conception are more likely to conceive a baby with a birth defect. So this concept should be corrected that if a person, male, is using methotrexate, it can transfer some birth defect to the fetus um, after on being on methotrexate. Then malignancy. There appear to be an increased risk of systemic lymphoma with long-term methotrexate therapy. The available data do not allow any firm conclusion as to whether methotrexate predisposes to cutaneous malignancy. Then miscellaneous effect. Other adverse effects include fatigue, headache, dizziness, alopecia, phototoxicity, and the recall reactions at the site of sunburn or radiotherapy, anaphylaxis, acral erythema, vasculitis, and cutaneous ulceration. Another important topic related to methotrexate is the folate supplementation. Low-dose methotrexate is generally well tolerated. However, number of toxic adverse reactions, as explained, myelotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, and stomatitis may limit its long-term use. Folate supplementation, which has its rationale that folic acid competes with methotrexate for dihydrofolate reductase enzyme, is shown in number of principally rheumatological studies to reduce the adverse reaction to methotrexate, particularly those related to GI tract, liver, and bone marrow. Two recent dermatological studies, however, have suggested a detrimental effect of folate supplementation of methotrexate efficacy, so the issue remains contentious. So remember, if you give folate more or daily basis with methotrexate, then you are compromising the efficacy of the drug. However, the balanced evidence favors supplementation although the optimal dose regimen remains uncertain. Folinic acid, known as the leucovorin, is effective as folic acid in reducing methotrexate toxicity. Folinic acid is particularly useful in rescue of bone marrow, GI tract, from methotrexate toxicity or acute methotrexate overdose to avoid impairing intracellular uptake of methotrexate folic acid should not be taken within 12 hours of weekly methotrexate dose the folinic acid should not be given within 12 hours of weekly methotrexate dose furthermore both folic acid and folinic acid reduce plasma homocysteine level and therefore theoretically may benefit those patients which are at risk of cardiovascular disease. Drug-drug interaction. We have explained that the few drugs displaces methotrexate from plasma protein and increases its serum level, which include all the NSAIDs and sulfonamides. 
the antifolate effect of nitrous oxide, trimethoprim sulfonamides, dapsone, and phenytoin also have a detrimental effect. Renal excretion of methotrexate is reduced by ciprofloxacillin, NSAIDs, penicillin, probenicid. Contraindication. As mentioned before, it is contraindicated in pregnant and breastfed feeding uh, mothers and those with known methotrexate hypersensitivity. Then significant impairment of hepatic and renal function, some pre-existing blood dyscrasias, immunodeficiencies, and latent infections like tuberculosis or hepatitis B and C are relative contraindications as well as the excessive alcohol consumption. Pre-treatment screening. Potential recipient of methotrexate should be counseled about the risk of immunosuppressive therapy, provided with written details on medications and warned about the drug-drug interactions. Prior to commencing methotrexate, screening should be undertaken, pregnancy should be excluded, and contraception, ideally two method, should be carefully discussed. A pre-treatment chest x-ray is probably not necessary unless there is a risk of tuberculosis. Dose and regimens. For dermatological conditions, methotrexate is given once a week and there is a standard practice to give that the weekly dose can be divided into two doses 12 hourly over 24 hours. This is particularly helpful if methotrexate is inducing nausea. If methotrexate nausea is not relieved, then it can be given as intramuscular or self-administered subcutaneous injection. A common practice is to give a test dose of 5 mg, uh, followed by a blood CP and LFTs after one week to detect idiosyncratic reaction of methotrexate and thereby increasing the dose by 2.5 to 5 mg per week. Ordinarily, the dose should not exceed 25 mg weekly. And if not effective, even in this dose, switching to subcutaneous route should be done. Once optimal response is achieved, dose of methotrexate can be tapered by 2.5 mg each week to the lowest dose necessary to maintain a clinical benefit. It is also a standard practice to administer oral folic acid 5 mg once weekly, usually on the day following methotrexate. Oral folinic acid, 3 doses of 5 mg at 12 hour interval, commencing 24 hour after weekly methotrexate, should be considered if folic acid is not improving the GI symptoms or not correcting abnormalities of liver enzymes or macrocytosis. Monitoring. Close monitoring is required until the methotrexate dose is stabilized, particularly in elderly patients with renal impairments. Initially, blood CP and LFTs and creatinine should be checked every one to two weeks for four to eight weeks. Thereafter, the frequency of blood tests can be reduced to three monthly. During the early months of treatment, patient must be educated to note down signs and symptoms of bone marrow suppression like bruising, sore throat and mouth ulcers, the importance of contraception and avoidance of drugs that might interact with methotrexate. The development of abnormal liver function tests can be a sign of methotrexate damage, but liver enzyme level may be normal despite of significant hepatic fibrosis. Elevation of liver transaminases to double the upper limit of normal necessitates discontinuation or dose reduction of methotrexate. This is continuing uncertainty 
over the optimal method for identifying and monitoring liver fibrosis. The modern use of low dose once weekly methotrexate for psoriasis is associated with hepatic fibrosis in minority. There is no association between the cumulative methotrexate dose and liver fibrosis as thought previously. Factors that increase the risk factor for liver injury in psoriatic patients are again mentioned as obesity, alcohol abuse, and diabetes. The standard liver function tests are insufficient to monitor hepatic fibrosis. In past, liver biopsies were recommended, but now the use of serum aminoterminal peptide of pro-collagen 3, hyaluronic acid, and tissue inhibitor of matrix metalloproteinase 1 are biomarkers of fibrosis that reduce the need of routine liver biopsy or by use of fibroscan, which is a device used to assess liver fibrosis based on the technique of transient elastography. Any deterioration in these more sensitive tests of hepatic function should prompt referral to hepatologist for consideration of measurement of liver elasticity and probably liver biopsy. Now, the second drug which we are going to discuss today is also very important and this drug is mycophenolate mofetil. It's a potent immunosuppressant prodrug of mycophenolic acid used primarily to prevent solid organ graft rejection, but is now increasingly being employed off level in treatment of variety of immunologically mediated dermatological conditions as a single agent or as a steroid sparing drug. The dermatological uses. Mycophenolate mofetil has a predictable beneficial effect in the treatment of immunobullous disorders like pemphigus and pemphiboid and less consistent effect in psoriasis, atopic eczema, connective tissue disorders and vasculitis. disease. But now the effect on vasculitis disease is gaining little momentum. Pharmacological properties. Administration, when given for dermatological reasons, MMF is administered orally, although there is an intravenous preparation as well. The pharmacokinetics. The drug is absorbed efficiently from GI tract and rapidly converted to its active metal metabolites, that mycophenolic acid, which is 97% bound to plasma albumin, Half-life of MPA is approximately 16 hours. MPA is metabolized predominantly in liver. More than 90% of the administered mycophenolate mofetil is excreted in urine, where reminder is eliminated in the feces. Pharmacodynamics Like azathioprine, mechanisms underlying the immunosuppressive action of mycophenolate mofetil include, involves the purine biosynthesis. Adenine and guanine, the purine nucleobases, are both derived from nucleoside inosine 5 monophosphate. And mycophenolic acid interferes with this process by inhibiting the action of inosine 5 monophosphate dehydrogenase. Effect of mycophenolate mofetil is specifically targeted towards T and B lymphocytes, therefore results in relative selective immunosuppressive effect on lymphocytes and suppression of cell-mediated immune response and inhibition of antibody production by activated B lymphocytes. The drug also induces apoptosis of activated T lymphocytes and it inhibits the presentation of antigen to the T lymphocyte by dendritic cells. 
decrease lymphocyte and monocyte recruitment at site of inflammation. Clinical response to MMF is slow and typically takes six to eight weeks. Then potential adverse effects. The gastro gastrointestinal toxicity. The most common side effects of MMF are gastrointestinal and dose dependent. Nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea and constipation occur in up to 20% of the patients. Administration with food and use of enteric coated mycophenolate mofetil may reduce this side effects and it is not considered to be hepatotoxic. Hematological toxicity. Anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia are not uncommon. They are usually mild, dose-related, and reversible with discontinuation of therapy or by dose reduction. Teratogenicity. Despite limited data, Mycophenolate mofetil appear to be teratogenic when given in early pregnancy and associated with early miscarriage and with craniofacial and cardiac malformations in the fetus. Infections. MMF appeared to increase susceptibility to opportunistic infections, particularly particularly in organ transplant recipients, especially the cytomegalovirus, the varicella zoster virus, the herpes simplex virus, bacterial sepsis, atypical mycobacterial and fungal infections. The systemic immunosuppression carries with it the risk of reactivation of latent viruses like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, JC virus, which is associated with multifocal leukoencephalopathy, as well as reactivation of dormant tuberculosis. Conversely, MMF has antimicrobial activity against certain pathogens, which include hepatitis C, HIV, and pneumocystitis gerovici. Mucocutaneous candidosis, urinary tract infection, and pneumonia are commonly associated with mycophenolate morphotel therapy. Carcinogenicity. The magnitude of potential of MMF to cause lymphoproliferative malignancy is answered. However, development of Epstein-Barr virus-related B lymphoma involving CNS is recorded. There is no clear evidence base for association between MMF and non-melanoma cutaneous malignancy. But it is advisable that sun protection should be practiced. Miscellaneous side effects include the gastrointestinal like freak, uh, gastro genitourinary like frequency of urine, dysuria, urgency, hematuria, and sterile pyojuria. CNS symptoms include tremor, dizziness, anxiety, depression, confusional state, dysgeusia, and headache. Skin symptoms include urticaria, hand dermatitis, and alopecia. Lung, dyspnea, cuff, interstitial lung disease, and pulmonary fibrosis. Among miscellaneous include electrolyte disturbance, hypercholesterolemia, hypo and hypertension, arthralgias, and pyrexia. Caution, it should be contraindicated in pregnancy and breastfeeding women and a history of hypersensitivity to the drug. Caution should be used with caution in patients with active GI tract disease and live attenuated vaccine should be avoided. Pre-treatment screening. Blood tests include blood CT, urea and electrolytes, liver function test, hepatitis B and C, HIV. And contraceptive counseling should be undertaken and two forms of contraception commencing four weeks prior to initiating the treatment and continued for six weeks after discontinuation of the treatment. Pregnancy within one week of starting treatment should pregnancy test within one week of starting treatment should be performed. Then dose and regimen. 
Twice daily, daily dose is recommended. The reasonable starting dose is 500, 250 milligram twice a day for first week, then 500 milligram twice daily. Thereafter, increasing by 500 milligram daily or twice daily every four weeks until a maximum of 1.5 mg is reached. Patients should be reminded that clinical response is slow. Monitoring. Full blood count should be checked weekly for first month, fortnightly for two months, then monthly for first year. Thereafter, if stable, blood count should be checked every two to three months. Electrolytes, creatinine and liver function should be monitored two to four weeks, following dose escalation than every two to three months. So it is considered to be a relatively safe drug. Now the third drug which we are going to discuss today is a very important anti-inflammatory drug and that is colchicine. It is an ancient drug, originally derived from roots and seeds of plant of genus uh, colchicum. In UK, it is licensed only for treatment of acute gout, but it has recognized benefit in familial Mediterranean fever, in Bechet disease, and in recurrent pericarditis. Dermatological use. All the uses are off-label and it is used in neutrophilic dermatosis like sewage syndrome, recurrent abscess stomatitis, in cutaneous vasculitis, in autoimmune bullous disorders like DH, EPA, linear IgA, again the neutrophilic bullous disorders, then autoimmune connective tissue diseases like dermatomyositis and sleep derma. It is administered orally. Parental use has given serious safety concerns, so it should not be used. Pharmacokinetics. Colchicine is lipophilic and absorbed in small intestine. Peak plasma concentration is reached after oral administration in 30 to 90 minutes. It's metabolized in liver. Deacetylation occurs by, cypro, cypro, cyclo, by CYP, CYP3A4 system and is excreted predominantly into the dye. 10 to 20% is eliminated unchanged in urine. Colchicine is widely distributed in tissue, but accumulates preferentially in neutrophils, where it exceeds 12 times the peak plasma concentration and hence uh, produces its effects on the neutrophilic dermatosis. Pharmacodynamics. Colchicine has both anti-mitotic and anti-inflammatory properties, but the precise mechanism of action is uncertain. The anti-inflammatory action results from the modulation of pro-inflammatory molecule production and reduction in neutrophil degranulation, chemotaxis, and phagocytosis. The potential adverse effects. GI effects. Uh, the most important and includes watery diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, bloatness, and hyperparastalsis. Toxicity and poisoning. Acute overdays commences within hours with burning sensation in mouth and throat and severe gastroenteritis like symptoms. In 24 to 72 hours, signs of multi organ dysfunction and sepsis may develop, leading to bone marrow failure, renal and hepatic damage, respiratory distress. CNS toxicity, myocardial damage, DIC, metabolic acidosis, hypovolemic shock with fatal consequences. Contraindication. It is contraindicated with known hypersensitivity to the drug and with blood dyscrasias. Caution. Should be used in, with caution if there is renal or hepatic dysfunction and must be avoided during pregnancy. Drug-drug interaction. Lie, drug like cyclosporin, erythromycin, clarithromycin, ketoconazole, itraconazole, antivirals, and verapamil and grapefruit juice inhibit cytochrome and may increase colchicine levels and toxicity. Free treatment screening. Full blood count, renal and hepatic biochemistry, urine analysis, and pregnancy tests should be taken. The starting dose is 0.5 mg per day, increasing to 0.5 mg twice or thrice a day over several weeks. The dose can be 
subsequently tapered as the disease activity allows. The fourth drug of today is Dapsone. Synthesis of Dapsone is, was in 1908 and it still retains the important role in treatment of leprosy, prophylaxis of malaria, and pneumocystis, pneumocystitis pneumonia, and recently shown to have an anti-epileptic activity as well. In 1950, it was realized that Dapsone has a potent anti-inflammatory properties that paved the way of its use in variety of dermatological inflammatory disorders. So dermatological uses. In UK, Dapsone is licensed for the treatment of dermatitis herpetiformis and rapidity of its action, that is one to three days, is used as a diagnostic tool for this condition. The drug also has a predictable beneficial effect in linear IgA disease, in chronic bullous disease of childhood, bullous lupus erythematosus, erythema elevatum diotinum, IgA pemphigus, and subcorneal pustular dermatosis. Other diseases include autoimmune blistering disorders like bullous and secretorial pemphigoid, pemphigus, and epidermolysis bullosa acquisita. Several vasculitis, which especially those involving neutrophils like leukocytoclastic vasculitis, articarial vasculitis, granuloma facial, and Bechet disease response. Same is the case with neutrophilic dermatosis like Sue syndrome and pyoderma ganglionosa. Other conditions include lupus erythematosus, paniculitis, acne vulgaris, pustular psoriasis, delayed pressure urticaria and relapsing polychondritis. Pharmacological properties. Administration. Dapsone is taken orally in a tablet form, 50 mg and 100 mg tablets. A topical preparation of Dapsone 5% gel is available for the treatment of acne now in Pakistan as well. Dapsone is lipid soluble and water insoluble. Orally, it is absorbed efficiently from gastrointestinal tract and, and appear to have a significant enterohepatic circulation. It's widely distributed, crossing placenta, passing in breast milk, metabolized in liver, metabolites are subsequently glucuronated and excreted in urine, small percentage in bile. The pharmacodynamics. Depson affect the folic acid metabolic pathway, an important process in DNA synthesis, it is relatively toxic to bacterial cell as it inhibits bacterial synthesis of dihydrofolate. The mechanism underpinning the anti-inflammatory effect is poorly understood. It has inhibitory action on neutrophils and eosinophil myeloperoxidase. Also inhibit neutrophil chemotaxis by inhibiting interleukin-8 release, which is a neutrophil chemotoxin. Further actions include stabilization of neutrophil lysosomes, inhibition of neutrophil lysosomal enzymes, and suppression of neutrophil additions and recruitment. Pharmacogenetics. Depsone hydroxy hydroxylamines have a strong oxidizing properties with the potential to induce a state of oxidative stress sufficient to cause severe hemolysis and methemoglobinemia in individuals who are glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenate deficient. G6PD gene is on X chromosome with number of polymorphism. One of the main function of G6PD is generation of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate that prevents the accumulation of free radicals that would cause oxidative damage to the proteins. This is a particular risk of damage to cell membrane and hemoglobin by dapsone hydroxylamine if G6PD is deficient. So among the pharmacogenetics, the main gene which should be checked while putting a patient on dapsone is the G6PD levels. 
and this defense against the oxidative stress is overwhelmed. Consequent damage to erythrocyte plasma membrane results in hemolysis or phagocytosis. And the ferrous ion of hemoglobin molecule is oxidized to the ferric state with decreased oxygen carrying capacity. Therefore, it is prudent to screen for functional G6PD deficiency prior to commencing the depsone therapy. Then the pharmacological adverse effects. Hemolysis and methemoglobinemia. Hemolytic anemia and methemoglobinemia are dose-dependent side effects occurring to some degree in all depsone-treated patients but showing great individual variability. Met hemoglobinemia is manifest by lethargy and headache and a cyanotic hue to the skin and mucous membrane and may exacerbate pre-existing cardiac and pulmonary insufficiency. Mid or moderate degree of met hemoglobinemia is treated with cimetidine, 400 mg thrice daily, vitamin E and ascorbic acid. A idiosyncratic adverse effects. A granulocytosis is potentially life-threatening for which the mechanism is unknown. Dapsone-induced agranulocytosis is more common in older individuals more than 60 years and those of non-white descent. Agranulocytosis may present with fever, sore throat, signs of infection and usually manifest within three weeks to three months of treatment being commenced. Recovery of neutrophil count tend to occur within 7 to 14 days of withdrawing the drug, although the mortality rate is 14 to 33 percent. Peripheral neuropathy. Rarely, Dapsone causes peripheral neuropathy, which is more commonly motor than sensory. Symptoms may persist long after Dapsone therapy is terminated sometime as long as one to three years. It typically presents with weakness of hands and legs, loss of fine motor skill, gait disturbance, foot drop, glove and stocking loss of sensation, and wasting of hand muscles. Typically, Dapsone-induced peripheral neuropathy develop after several years of treatment Although may occur quickly within six weeks. Ocular side effect. Dapsone therapy may cause optic neuritis, optic atrophy, macular infarction, and potentially resulting in severe visual impairment. Diabetes, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and coagulopathies are contributing risk factors. It may cause GI upset, anorexia, headache, insomnia, and rarely acute psychosis or photosensitivity. Then, Dapsone hypersensitivity syndrome. It's an idiosyncratic adverse reaction of unknown mechanism occurring in first three to five weeks of commencing the therapy. It comprises of at least two of the following four signs, fever, lymphadenopathy, generalized rash and hepatitis and the uh, syndrome resembles the dress syndrome that is drug rash with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. So among the four signs that is fever, lymphadenopathy, hepatitis and rash, if only two are present then we can label it as Depsone hypersensitivity syndrome. Prevalence is 1.4%, fatality is 9.9%, .9 with liver failure as a most frequent cause of death. Mucosal involvement, a rash which is maculopapular or 10-like, develops. Delayed cessation of Dapsone therapy is associated with increased risk of fatal outcomes. Nausea and vomiting are common, as are eosinophilia and leukocytosis.
other internal organs like kidney, heart, lung, and pancreas are affected. Treated with systemic glucocoid therapy, which may be beneficial when the internal organ or mucosa are involved, it should be tapered after one month. Contraindication. It is contraindicated in patients with known hypersensitivity to dapsone and relative contraindication in severe G6PD deficiency and in advanced cardiovascular and pulmonary diseases and it may exacerbate by dapsone-induced hemolytic anemia and methemoglobinemia. Caution. It should be used with caution in pregnancy and should only be used when it is unavoidable. However, Depsone is considered to be moderately safe, although hemolysis and methemoglobinia may develop in utero and in breastfeeding infants. Folic acid 5 mg daily for mother is advised during pregnancy. Drug-drug interaction. It is uncommon with Depsone, although plasma concentration of Depsone is reduced by rifampicin, carbamazepine, phenytoin, grisofulvin, proton pump inhibitor, and H2 antihistamines. And plasma concentration is increased by methotrexate, sulfonamide, and hydroxychloroquine. So, produces the increased risk of hematological side effects. Pre treatment screening, a baseline clinical examination of peripheral motor and sensory functions, then a full blood count, liver and renal function should be taken, as well as G6PD level determined. Dose and regimen. The commencing dose is usually 50 to 100 mg. Depending upon the pretreatment screening, subsequently increasing to 100 to 200 mg daily. Once adequate dose disease control is attained, the dose should be gradually tapered to lowest effective dose to minimize the toxicity. Monitoring full blood count and DLC should be checked every week for first four weeks, then fortnightly for eight weeks to monitor a granulocytosis. Patients should be warned to discontinue immediately in event of fever, chill, and sore throat within three months of commencing depth zone. Full blood count and reticulocyte count should be checked three to four monthly. Sign of hemolysis that is raised, retic count, and bilirubin should prompt request for a blood film. And in blood film, we find Hain's body within RBCs in G6PD induced hemolysis, and lactate dehydrogenase levels are raised. It is prudent to check the liver function test fortnightly for the first three months. Thereafter, liver and renal function should be performed with full blood count every three to four months. The fifth drug we are going to discuss, and this will be the last drug to be discussed today, is acitretin. It is a metabolite of etretinate which has totally replaced etretinate due to the narrow therapeutic window and long half-life of etretinate. Acitretin binds to the nuclear receptors of steroid superfamily, which include vitamin D receptors, and it reduces keratinocyte proliferation and reduces Th17 cells with concomitant increase in regulatory T cells. Acitretin is not immunosuppressant, therefore is considered inactive malignancy. Efficacy of psoriasis is dose-dependent and NICE guidelines suggest a dose escalation with a target dose of 25 to 50 mg per day. Daily dose of 50 mg or higher required for significant efficacy. It is associated with mucocutaneous side effects. It causes hyperlipidemia and rarely hepatitis. It is teratogenic and is contraindicated in pregnancy due to its lipophilic nature and persists in adipose tissue for up to two years. Current guidelines recommend that women of childbearing age must not become pregnant for three years after cessation of acitretin. The retinoids and PUVA or narrowband UVB appear to act synergistically with uh, acitretin, and the combination reduces the dose of retinoids and the energy of UV radiation and give a better cure. So I would like to end my lecture here and I would 
keep the other topics for the next lecture because already the lecture has gone very long. So thank you very much for patient listening and wish you a very good day ahead. Thank you and goodbye.